Hi, this is Miss Logan. Today I'll be talking about 1D motion graphing. So as a quick reminder from the previous flipped lesson, just want to go over the difference between scalars and vectors and the vocabulary associated with this. So as a reminder, scalars are distance and speed. They are just magnitude. However, our vectors are displacement, velocity, and acceleration. They have magnitude plus a direction. This is going to become really important when we are working through our different problems and in graphing. So in our most recent lab, we found positions and times and recorded them. We can easily graph this to understand what's going on. However, we're gonna do this a little bit opposite way when we're actually looking at graphing motion. So, this top drawing up here is like a number line. This person is starting at one meter, going to four meters, and then coming back around to negative one meter. This graph down here is going to put each of these time and positions into a graph format. But let's first make our data table. So our first one, which is associated here, at a time of zero seconds, we had a position of one meter. At one second, we had a position of three meters. At two seconds, a position of four meters. And then at three seconds, we had a position of two meters. Finally, at four seconds, we had a position of negative one meters. So we'll see up at the top that this graph shows our motion. This person is going from one meter to four and going all the way back around. Our graph looks a little bit different, so let's explore this. Remember, our time is increasing on our x-axis and our position goes from zero up and then zero in the negative direction. We start at one and we're going all the way up to four meters as we see the person turns around and we are going back down with our positions. This is really important when we think about displacement. We can go in a direction in a positive and negative way. This is really not how we normally think about things. We're normally just traveling some distance. So we can have negative position and it is important when we're thinking about our velocity. So now that we saw what it looks like when we look at a position graph and then find the data, let's do this the other way around. So in this situation, we have a dog that starts at a position of zero meters and walks plus 10 meters. So we can assume they started at zero, zero, zero seconds and zero meters. So then we're walking 10 meters in 30 seconds. So let's say this is 30 seconds, 60 seconds, 90 seconds. Okay, so the dog walks in 30 seconds, a total of 10 meters, okay? Then the dog is walking negative 20 meters in 60 seconds. So let's pause for a minute. The dog is walking down negative 20 meters, not to negative 20 meters, in 60 seconds. So if we have 10 minus 20, we're going to get negative 10 meters. So we're gonna, the dog is gonna end up all the way down here, okay? So if it says in 60 seconds, we need to add that on to our original 30 seconds. So make sure when you're looking at these problems, you're really paying attention to wording. Okay, so my first question says, what is the velocity from zero to 30 seconds? So let's think for a minute, how can we figure this out? As a reminder, velocity is our displacement over our total, over our time. So, this may also be related to something on our graph. The slope represents our velocity in our position versus time graphs. Why? 
slope is equal to rise over the run, okay? So our dog went a total of 10 meters in 30 seconds. So our final velocity is going to be one third meters per second. I basically just found the slope of this line. Let's look at this for our second problem. We now ask, what is the velocity from 60, sorry, 30 to 60 seconds? So before we begin, reminder, we are finding the slope of this line, which is also our velocity, our displacement over our time. So our ending point is negative 10 meters, and we're subtracting that from our initial, which is 10 meters, and that's over a total of 30 seconds. So we'll have negative 20 meters over 30 seconds. So our final answer will be negative two-thirds second. So our big picture idea here is that our velocity is our displacement over time, which is also equal to our rise over our run. How can we think about that in a different way? This right here is our position. This is our time. That's my rise over my run. Also my position over my time. So the relationship between these graphs is really cool. And if you're in calculus, you will get to this in more detail. The slope of each of these lines is equal to the next one. We're going to be really focusing, though, on position and velocity graphs. So a position graph, its slope will be the velocity. The slope of a, of a velocity versus time graph will be the acceleration. It is talking about tangent lines in here. That is something that you'll get to in, upper, in AP physics or college level physics. However, we're just going to really worry about the slope right now. So position versus time graph, our slope is velocity. Velocity versus time graph, our slope is acceleration. OK, so let's look at this one. It's a velocity versus time graph. So I start out right here. And as a reminder, my slope is my acceleration. So each of these points in here, OK? So in this first one, you'll see that there is no slope. So there is no acceleration. What is going on in 10 to 20 seconds? We have a positive acceleration. Here we have no slope, so no acceleration. And here we have a negative acceleration. All right, so perfect timing, there's the bell. Here are your follow-up questions. Make sure you go back, relook at this video. We're gonna be really focusing on this over the next few days. So make sure that you come to class with any questions that you have. Thank you.